So, um, thank you very much. I'm uh, very uh, honoured to be uh, presenting here. I'm not sure, I think I have been to all of the LibreOffice conferences. Uh, maybe I missed one. Um, I, I'm not sure, but um, one of the things that has I, I found really encouraging and really heartening is how much this community has grown from when it started basically as a spin-off. Um, and it's, it's essentially moved to take centre stage. And it's actually made, the work that everyone has done here um, has actually made a great deal of difference to people's everyday computing experience. And um, I don't know whether you all realise that because I'm, I, um, I uh, have worked on free software for a long time, uh, so open source, uh, back when it was free software rather than open source. Um, so, hang on a second, I should probably mention who I am. Um, I'm actually just an engineer in Google's open source programs office. Um, that's a very old photo. As you can see by the fact that I'm probably about 200 pounds larger in that photo. Um, so, Google's open source programs office. What do we do? Um, we're actually a, a small tax write-off for Google, probably, um, who live on the side of Google Research. And we do um, a lot of the work around reaching out to communities. Um, we do license compliance, both inbound and outbound. Um, we release code. We encourage engineers within Google to release code. Um, we run the Summer of Code program. I'm going to talk a little bit more about these things later. Um, we do um, API licensing, protocols um, and specification releases, and we also fund uh, very specific open source projects such as my own project Samba, Git, Garrett, uh, uh, the Go projects, uh, a boatload of, of other things. Um, so yes, um, I, I'm uh, the co-creator of Samba. Anyone here not heard of Samba? Just want to make sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, I'm talking to a, an open source audience, but I, I often talk to uh, less less friendly audiences. Um, and so I, I do a, a, a boatload of different things. I think I'm running off the wrong presentation here. Yeah. No. Never mind. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm doing. I don't think I'm doing no many more. And I'm pretty sure I deleted that last night. But there you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there could be there could be more mistakes in here that I'm. Uh, I, hang on a second, just let me make sure. No, I am running the right one. Oh, there you go. Um, yes. So there we go. Um, and I occasionally interview people and do things for the for the Google blog. I shall probably be doing something uh, like that uh, after this conference. So uh, yes, that, that's kind of my credentials. Uh, and I love coming to these conferences um, because even though Google doesn't actually ship a uh, LibreOffice or an OpenOffice produced product, um, the standards that are produced around uh, LibreOffice and OpenOffice, they're really, really important to Google. Um, so as I was saying, uh, this, this project has made a great deal of difference in, in people's everyday lives. Um, the one I know most intimately, obviously, is my brother, who, who uh, was a, a very unhappy Microsoft and, and Word user, um, and uh, you know was dealing with the daily trials and tribulations. And the one thing that stopped him moving over to using the Linux desktop was um, Microsoft Word compatibility. And I'm delighted to say that the recent LibreOffice have, have just solved most of those problems for him. Um, it's not it's not perfect, it's not 100%, but it's good enough so that most users in everyday use, they can they can deal uh, with the docx and the proprietary document formats. Um, and LibreOffice just works for them. And you know what, I think everyone ought to give yourselves a round of applause for that, because that really is. That, that really is a phenomenal achievement. And, and now I've sort of given you my credentials, I can say the reason I recognize this is because essentially I've seen this happen before. Um, uh, many of you, are, many of you are, are, are old enough, but many of you are not, to remember the, the early days of Linux when the idea of running Linux or, or free software on a desktop was just a dream. Our goal at that point was to try and make some inroads into the server space. And, um, Many people have told me that Samba, my own project which interoperates with Windows, 
was one of the major drivers, obviously Apache 2, to enable free software servers to come in and displace proprietary software. And LibreOffice is essentially doing the same thing on the desktop. It's the, the, the desktop, you know, the desktop, the word processing, presentation, etc., uh, calculation suites. They are the things that are preventing people from trying out free software uh, on desktops, in offices, and LibreOffice is actually doing the same thing for the desktop that Samba did and Apache did for the servers. Now, unfortunately, we, we have to make sure it's not a, a, a Pyrrhic victory in that we take over the desktop just in time for the desktop to become completely and utterly irrelevant. <laughs> um, so, um, the, moving to mobile is, is obviously something that, that we care very much about uh, at Google, and uh, I would really encourage, and you know, one of the reasons we like to help the Document Foundation is to try and get LibreOffice working really well on mobile platforms, because more and more, uh, I, I fly around the world a lot, and I very rarely, I only see old people like me using laptops anymore on airplanes. Everyone else is using tablets. So that's, that's really where we need to go. So I'm going to skip through this section, mostly because this is a, a generic sort of Google Open Source um, Programs Office slide uh, that has to cope with people who really don't know much about Open Source uh, and are trying to introduce them to the topic and why they should care. So I'm kind of going to skip through this um, about license use. Hooray, go GPL. Um, so here's something interesting. Uh, how many people here, and this is probably a very biased sample, how many people here actually get paid for writing their free software? Full, okay, uh, full-time job? Yeah? That's, that's amazing. I mean, I know this is a LibreOffice developers conference, but still, there, there would have been a time when I would have asked that question and maybe three people's hands would have gone up. So, so the idea that people get paid as a full-time job for writing software that they give away, I mean, you know, I, I was one of the very early lucky people to get paid full-time for writing software and giving it away. Uh, and this is becoming a career. <laughs> it's, it's great. If any of you guys want to, uh, want to switch tracks, by the way, uh, I, I could place about 10 Samba engineers in Silicon Valley startups tomorrow. So. If any of you guys want to start start programming, you know, start going backwards and programming in C again and work on Samba, I'm, I'm your man. Come see me later. Um, so again, yeah, this is um, really the result. Uh, and I, I like to uh, I like to point this out, usually not to developers, but to sort of management types uh, and people running companies. When I get to present this in those environments. And what they're used to is they're used to sort of thinking, well, you know, professional software isn't professional unless you're buying it from you know, SAP or Oracle or, you know, even Google or whatever. Um, this, this open source stuff, it's, it's just amateurs. And it really isn't. It's, it's, it is becoming enterprise, well, it has become and already is enterprise level software. And, um, do any of you guys get to go to any of the Linux Foundation events? Has anyone been? Anyone? Uh, a few. Um, if, if you've been to those, um, they're, they're run by a guy who runs Linux Foundation called Jim Zemlin, who is the world's best used car salesman, if you ever, you know, or the world's best salesperson. Um, he, he goes up there and gives these amazing presentations, and, you know, you're just sort of thinking, I want to give you my money, Jim. He's, he's, he's marvelous at it. Much, much better than a salesperson than me. But one of the things he's selling, and he, he points out his job is so easy, he's selling sort of free enterprise level software. And, and most of the companies that are creating um, software based products, which to say that we, these days is everybody realizes what they're getting essentially for free. All right, they have to put engineering resource into maintaining and understand it. But the, the quality of the code that they're getting is phenomenal. Um, so, for instance, how many uh, people here knew that... Um, has anyone here heard of Tesla? The, the, the Volvo of Silicon Valley. Um, it's essentially uh, all, all Tesla cars, their entire entertainment system, they're all Linux-based. Um, so, 
people, people are building amazing things on top of the software that essentially all of us are writing. Uh, which is pretty good, it's keeping us in a job. So, Google and open source. Where, where does Google fit into this? Well, you know, Google started out as this pile of Lego bricks, basically, in, in Stanford University. And uh, as they say, it grew and grew, and these are basically just sort of data center build out slides, and grew and grew. And, you know, I, I can't show you a picture of the latest data centers because, as any Larry Niven reader knows, that you can't take pictures in hyperspace. Uh, so God knows where the, the Google data centers really live these days. But if you step back and think, what is Google? So what is it? Yeah, it's a big company. But what actually does it consist of? Well, it's kind of in-house hardware, low-end hardware, and everything is built on top of a basis of free software. Everything is built on that. One of the meaner things I do when I go visit proprietary companies is I'm talking to them, and you know, I'm sure you know who they are, um, and, and you know they, they do all their own software. That you know that, that's what they sell. And I chat to them and I say, "Oh, you have to write all your own software? Doesn't that take a very long time? <laughs> wow! And that must that must take years and years to put together. We we." just kind of pull things off the net and most, you know, a lot of the functionality is already there. So Google uses a tremendous amount of open source and free software. Um, we have a separate repository, um, and here's going a little bit into the nuts and bolts of how the open source programs office structures things. So we have a, a, a third party repository where everything that isn't Google written goes into. And then we have um, a standardized mechanism of labeling, licensing, classifying, things that go in there. And, and unlike most companies where you have to go through sort of 12 levels of legal review to be able to sort of look or import an open source uh, software project, in Google, you kind of pull it in, you make sure that the licensing is correct, you make sure that everything has been pulled in in a, in a pristine pull from the repository and you check it in and you're done. Um, now obviously we have some sophisticated tools to make sure that when you build a product out of those pieces, all the licenses are able to match so that you don't you know, ship, um, you, know, you, you don't combine say um, GPLv3 with uh, something incompatible from Embarrassingly enough, GPLv2 only. Ha <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, so you don't have a mismatched set of licenses that, that break, etc. But it's incredibly easy to import and use free and open source software in Google. And that's why there's so much of it in use. Um, and then, of course, we actually create a lot of it um, and push it out the door. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. But there are just, I, I've lost count, you would, you would have to have automated scanning tools to, to count how much free and open source software we have inside of Google um, and how it's used. And, you know, obviously all these uh, layers of license compliance around there to make sure that we don't screw up because people love to see Google. Um, we really try not to, uh, to mess up. Uh, unfortunately, one of the really tedious parts of my job that isn't automated is that, you know, sometimes somebody has to go in and physically look at the stuff and say, no, you screwed that up, you need to change this, the automated tools thing. Yeah. And so, as one of the crosses to bear of being a Google open source programs office engineer is you have to do license review. So, but it's only about 5% of my time. So, you know, why, why do we do this? So, it's funny, I, I was horribly jet lagged last night and uh, was up between sort of like 2am and 5am. And I ended up watching a documentary on the making of 2001, God knows why, I couldn't sleep, YouTube was available, you know. And, and essentially, it really comes down to, to this. Um, although this, you know, you never know, this, this, this could become a nightmare scenario sooner than you think. Um, if you build your company, you build your software on top of other people's, um, on top of proprietary software. Um, it, it doesn't matter who it's from, you know, if it's software that you can't modify and you can't 
you can't control, somebody can always say to you, I'm sorry, I'm not going to let you do that. This is one of the reasons why, personally, I hate DRM so much. Um, so, a lot of it is really around control and ownership. By having all that software that we are able to modify, um, we can fix bugs that we run into um, and that would prevent us from running the business before, before we, we don't have to ask anyone, we don't have to seek permission to fix any of these issues. And of course, the idea is to get those fixes back out into the community as, as quickly as possible, because um, sort of hoarding these things is, is a dumb idea. Uh, now, admittedly, some of the fixes that people do, they might not be ones that you want to be given back, but that's, that's another matter. Witness the, the Android Linux kernel you know, issues. Um, but what it gives, <coughs> What it gives Google, and what it gives anyone who's willing to invest in understanding and maintaining the software, is complete flexibility and complete freedom. Um, and, you know, it's, like I like to say, it, it's really all Richard Stallman's arguments for why free software is a great thing, including especially the freedom, but, you know, people are scared of when you say freedom, they, they think you're some kind of communist or whatever. Um, which, is, which is worse in the US than it is in Europe. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, but we're not Google. Um, but you don't have to be Google to really take advantage of all the things that are out there. Um, and, and this is one that I, I often pitch to local, uh, local governments and councils and, you know, cities, is essentially you can use the availability of this resource to build up your local talents. Um, you know, Silicon Valley is a very weird place. Uh, I've lived there for over 20 years now, and I, I know what I'm talking about. It's a very strange place, full of very strange people, and it, it's it's a great place to be, but it's not the only place that innovation and creativity and software can come from. And having the software available everybody to everybody means that, you know, Given enough people sat together, you can build your own business, you can build your own um, industry around the software that is available for free. Um, so, you know, don't just become a user of someone else's proprietary, someone else's proprietary software. Um, if, you, if you're that, you know, you're essentially, uh, you, it, it's the difference between owning your own house and renting it. If you're using someone else's software, you're always paying rent, and you always will be. Um, if you invest in your own people, if you invest in your own engineers to build and maintain the software yourself, then you have a pool of talent that you can use to build some pretty amazing things. Um, so, well, I'm not doing too bad at that. I can put a lot of it out. Let's see. So, so what are the specifics? Um, which I've already gone through patching and code release. So, um, Google's very interesting, uh, having, again, worked in many companies where you had to go through several layers of management permission in order to release a patch into an open source project. Google has one layer of, of management um, in that area, and it's, well, there's just three people on it now. There's Chris, Danny, and Max, um, two of whom are lawyers, and essentially, you mail them your patches for a, a week or two until they decide that you're not insane. And then they say, go away, stop bothering us, patch directly. Um, and they encourage people to patch from their Google addresses, obviously. Um, so, it's an incredibly lightweight process uh, to push things back out into the community. And that's, that's, one, of the, uh, that's one of the things about Google I, I really love. I know I'm, I shouldn't come off as too much of that. Oh, my company is wonderful cheerleader. But there are some things that we do really well, and cutting out extraneous processes is one of them. I have another story around that. I will tell you uh, about standards later on, um, which I'm, I'm, I was really I was blown away by. Uh, but it's it's one of the reasons it's a really um, fun place to work. So yeah, patching outwards is extremely easy. Um, we just have to make sure we filter out the crazy people, and everyone has crazy people. So sort of even Google. Um, so uh, then there are large project releases. 
I'm, I'm going to say less about those. Uh, so there's Chrome, Chromium, uh, and the, um, the uh, Chrome desktops, the Chrome browser, and the Chromium OS, mainly because they are so big now that they're essentially their own divisions in the company. And, you know, may, they might ask us advice occasionally. Uh, and of course, the, the real heavyweight in this area is Android. Um, and, you know, we, we have someone who works in our office who works with the Android team on releasing, but pretty much they do their own thing um, because they're an entire division in the company now. You know, they, 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 don't, they don't want to have to ask the, the sort of, you know, 50 person open source program office to, for permission to do anything. Um, so those guys generally release on their own schedules and they release their own things. But we do get involved in some of the other things like uh, Webm, Web, Web, Webm, Web. I can never pronounce that. The uh, the video codec stuff, trying to solve the problem of free video codecs on the internet, um, getting away from the evil that is software patents. And there are actually a, a boatload of different um, uh, projects that get released, sort of fairly major code releases that come out of Google. So that's I've talked about inbound, and that's most of the outbound stuff. And then, of course, there's Summer of Code. Woohoo! How many people here have participated in Summer of Code? Anyone? Yay! Hey! Give yourself a round of applause. Great. Right. We love you guys. So this, this is a slightly out of date slide, so I'm going to skip over it. Um, so, um, the, for the people who don't know, the, the goal is that to get computing science students working on projects, um, through a rigorous application process run by Google. Mm. <coughs> I've said about that the better. Um, we, uh, uh, projects apply, students apply, we match up students with projects and essentially pay them to write code and try and become members of the open source community. Uh, and it's a, it's a great project. The biggest, the biggest headache in this, um, can anyone guess what the biggest headache is in this project? Anyone? Yeah? Paying the local. Exactly! <laughs> Dealing with the <laughs> 200 or 300 different tax authorities, uh, laws, etc. So, so, you know, the actual coding bit and, and, and helping the mentors or whatever, that's great, that's the fun part. And then there's like seven months of grinding work dealing with all the, the local tax authorities, making sure that you pay people, you know. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of grim. Uh, and we, so we actually run another program for high school students, uh, oh, which I didn't mention here. So we run a, a thing called Google Coding, which is much more fun because we don't pay them any money. <laughs> so that, that's actually much more fun for the open source program office to run because all we do is we give them a grand trip to Google and, and let them spend a week going around San Francisco and touring the Google campus. And, you know, uh, and I, I have to go and give talks to them. And uh, it, it's interesting. I, I actually, I actually ask them a Google interview question um, in the in the talk I give, which is which is kind of fun. Um, which proves you should never write network services in C, but uh, I'll, I'll ca catch me offline after, after this if you want to know uh, a little more about that. Um, so then we give away money. So everybody loves someone who gives away money. So we, we're members of the Linux Foundation, GNOME, uh, Document Foundation, Free Software, Software Freedom Conservancy, which I'm on the board of, Apache, we give money away to the Samba team, and many, many more. Uh, so it's sort of encouraging open source projects, open source foundations, uh, and, you know, open source science and, and data releases. Uh, so we actually do a lot of work around that. Then we have a standards organization which is affiliated with, um, but not that, uh, it has its own vice president, um, and uh, a, a vice president called Vint Cerf, uh, who you may have heard of, um, and he runs our standards organization. And so, so this, is, this is one of those times when uh, it's wonderful working for Google. Um, uh, the UK government was holding a consultation uh, about where, what document format to standardize on for, um, uh, for their all government communications. And of course, the, the two possibilities were ODF and OOXML. And I was kind of dimly aware of this, and then because I have you know regular everyday coding work, millions of other things to do, license compliance, completely forgot about it. 
until Michael called me up, uh, Michael Meeks called me up, uh, and essentially said, oh, um, by the way, Jeremy, um, the deadline's tomorrow. <laughs> can, can you get Google to submit something? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, great. Uh, yes, yes, he wants me to get an official statement from Google sent to the UK government on their standards blog, and he's giving me a day to do it. And we did it. <laughs> Don't applaud me, I was just the errand boy. <laughs> I, I, I had very little to do with it. I, I, I basically, I pinged Vint, who is immediately online, because I, I don't think he ever leaves the internet. Maybe he lives there, I don't know. Um, so I, I pinged Vint and said, do we want to do this? And he said, yes, this sounds great. Can you write me up a quote? So I wrote up a quote. And then it was like, well, okay, we need to get legal review. And we got legal review in less than an hour. <laughs> which, which, if anyone has ever worked for a large company, you will know how unusual that is. Uh, and then, then the only other thing I, I had to do was I had to check with the Google Docs people to make sure that we weren't, they weren't going to do something crazy or, or we were, you know, we were going to get in their way. And in fact, it turned out that the Google Docs guys were like, oh, that's great. We didn't know people really cared about that. And this is something that has, has basically told us that we need to improve our OEF support. So, uh, yeah, so, 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 and as, as, oh, yeah, question. Let's make it a moment to include ODF and ODT files in the Google search format. Search is a different department. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, comment, the comment was, now it's, it's time to, now you've done that for the doc team, now you need to get it done for search. Um, you remember how I said Android and Chrome were these big monoliths off to the side? Search is like <laughs> Mount Everest. <laughs> so, so I, I, yeah, that would be nice uh, if I ever find out anyone who works in Search and, you know, <laughs> who works far enough at the top in Search that I can, I can effect any change there, I will be sure to do so. Um, but yes, that's one of the downsides to working to a large corporation. Search is, search is, uh, search is the, the biggest bit. But uh, as I say, um, Google is built on internet standards. Uh, and so promoting standards, <coughs> promoting open standards, free to implement, royalty free, patent free standards is, is massively important. And uh, unfortunately, I have to use that crappy logo. We, the, the original logo for this was Eric Schmidt with the Che Guevara. You know, in the, the Che Guevara piece with the, the little beret on, uh, which I thought was great. Uh, we have the Data Liberation Front, which is a guerrilla organization within Google that is designed to make sure that you can get your data out of any Google property as easy as you can get it in. So uh, we don't want to build any roach motels. Um, so so the, these guys basically run around, and when anyone is trying to build something new, they go to them and say, okay, that's very nice. You, you've built this wonderful interface of importing stuff. Now what happens if people want to leave? How are you going to make that happen? So that's, um, that's kind of a very useful uh, bunch of guys. And they, they do that in their spare time. That's, that's you know, um, run out of Chicago, I think. OK, so being as I skipped a little bit, that's, that's not too bad. Um, we have a 10 minute coffee break before the next, next keynote. Uh, are there any questions? And the person up there was supposed to be taking photos didn't, so. Sucks to be you. Um, he was supposed to come down and take filters on. Anyway, he's going to do that now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I hope. Yeah, any questions? Yeah? you actually get to code? Uh, or you just do I get to go? Do you follow the sound? Actually, um, less than I would like. Uh, so one of, the, one of the things that has happened with Sam, and I'm going to get into Sam politics here, one of the things that has happened with Samba over the years is that as best practices in open source development have changed, so have we. One of the things that that means now is that no code goes into Samba without two engineer review and without regression tests built in to test whatever feature goes in. So this is how we don't collapse under our own weight of 20 year old legacy code. And because, so I love to code and I, probably get to code maybe one, one and a half days a week now. Because the rest of the time, most of my sample work is reviewing other people's patches. And it, that kind of sucks in terms of doing new and interesting things. 
But as somebody pointed out, they said, you get paid more than the other guys. <laughs> if somebody's going to do this work, it better be you. You know, so especially what I try and do is whenever someone posts a new patch, a new contributor, a new vendor or whatever, posts something on the sample list, I try and shepherd them through getting that code into Samba. So um, I code less than I'd like, especially uh, now I have an eight-year-old. This you know takes up a lot of my weekends. But very, very occasionally I, I will sort of disappear and just you know write something new just for the fun of it. But it's it's not as much fun as it, I, I don't get to do it as much as I'd like to do. It, so, uh, but I, I try and have bigger impacts when I make changes. Yes, another question. Uh, the Linux Foundation just recently changed to a dual dual auth um, check-in for the patches. Uh huh. Um, so it's not only sufficient to have an email, but you need a, a PGP way oh. to. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Get access to, to, to the to the repository. Yes. Um, I think this is a clever idea. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think they use some UB key um, with that. Oh yes, the little yeah. nubby things. Oh. Yes, we have we have those. Uh, so would yeah. this be a way for Google? And should this maybe be done by the Document Foundation also? So I, I think it is an excellent idea. So the comment is that Linux Foundation now have two engineer uh, review PGP uh, sign offs for all, all submissions. Um, should the Document Foundation do the same? Yes. Um, yeah, there's some interesting ideas being kicked around internally about that that I can't talk about right now. But yes, that would be a very good thing, and if we can work out how to help people do that, we certainly will. Uh, Samba, even though we have a Git tree, so we're theoretically distributed, anything that goes into the main repository, um, Theoretically, it could be spoofed because we don't PDP sign submissions, but um, we have pretty rigorous code review. Um, we haven't, no, no one's tried, to, at least on the Samba side of things, nobody has, to our knowledge, has tried to introduce security problems. We're, we're good enough at doing that on our own, we don't need help with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm saying that someone who's introduced a lot of them himself. Um, yes, I, that did come up about a year ago, and essentially we're not, the Document Foundation and LibreOffice um, code base and committer base might be big enough that you need that. We're still relatively small, that's why I say if this, I can get 10 more Samurai engineers, I can find you all jobs. Um, so we we're, we're still have about 10 to 15 people. and for, At least for us, for Samba, that might be a little wieldy. I, I would like to do it. Uh, if we can make it, trouble is nobody like them. You know what developers like. Well, we've done it this way forever, and I like doing it this way, and I don't, I don't want to change that. And it was hard enough to get some of the changes we have done to get the code quality up. So that's that's a, a bridge that we will cross when we have to. So, any other questions? Yeah. Can you maybe move to your left? Oh, oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> shall, I, shall I go back and pretend to be in the middle of the talk? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, let me put a slide on so at least I'll look. Um, so one of the bad things about uh, working at Google is that when he takes photos, he can't have any of you in them because then I would have to get legal review and a sign-off that you would give me your permission to appear on the Google blog, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't be bothered doing that. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so, so at least on the Google blog, it'll be a, it'll be a, a conference with just me in it. <laughs> sorry. sorry about that because I know I can give him my permission. Right. Uh, yes. Question. I'd just like to say thank you for Gerrit. Sorry? I'd just like to say thank you for Gerrit, the code review stuff you guys are doing. Oh, for, for Gerrit. So that's actually run um, in the... So, so I have um, I have Git. Uh, on, on the left-hand side of my office, I have Git, um, Wireshark, and, oh God, one other... Uh, uh, Lib, Glibc committers. And on the other side of my office, I have Gerrit committers. So it's great. Whenever I have a Git problem, I just go straight around to Junior and kick him and say, "What's going wrong with my repository?" Which is which is pretty good tech support. Actually. <laughs> so that that's kind of handy. The bad news is because they share a wall with me. When I'm screaming obscenities down the phone to a Samba committer, they can hear me. But, you know, uh, yes, Gerrit is very nice. We actually evaluated it for Samba. Um, but we couldn't agree because, you know, we are such a happy, uncontentious, friendly, open source community. <laughs> the great thing about Samba is that we all, at least we all hate each other more than we hate all the other 
which makes us so <laughs> <it's, it makes laughs> <it's> friendly. So. <laughs> <coughs> yes, uh, so yes, Gerrit is very nice, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, Sean is very happy to take them, just email him and bug him. I, I, I was doing that, when we, when, we were down, when we were trying it out for Samba, I would be around there every day complaining about the web UI, because, you know, web UI suck, <laughs> so, uh, yes, any other questions? Just a comment, so, uh -huh. uh, just tying in with this uh, uh, PGP and signing thing, I would like to remind everyone who's interested in that, uh, on the key signing party, which is a great event taking place tomorrow at 5. Oh, yes, uh, thank you, and one other comment. So I use uh, Thunderbird with edit mail, and it works with Gmail. So there's no excuse for not PGP encrypting and signing all of your emails all the time. So I actually have mine set up so that um, it encrypts by default and I have to explicitly click, no, I want to send this unencrypted. So it's a pain in the ass because of course most people I'm sending to have to click that, but it reminds me that that needs to get fixed. Yeah, if, question. If you really want to make our lives better, put some money into making Enigma suck less. Suck less. <laughs> well, so Google has announced that they're doing a webmail-based PGP uh, email and I think they're probably putting resources there. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, did, did you see the announcement? Yeah, did you see the announcement? Uh, they're actually doing a JavaScript based PGP. Um, the key management will be the problem. Key management is always the problem. But um, anyway, that's crypto stuff is hard. Yeah. Um, I, I like the slide as a background, and I also like what you said about uh, the very quick process in, in during uh, the document information. What would it take to possibly overnight join the ODFTC from Google side? Um, it would require me to get attention from the Google Docs team. Uh, email me about it, mm -hmm. and because uh, we used to be on it, I, I was the one who had to sit on these endless, tedious conference calls that were at 6 a.m. my time. Yeah. Uh, and I think I just gave yeah, up, that's a bit fell asleep. More friendly now, oh, thank God for that! Yeah. Yes, yes. Six, six, the trouble is, 6 a.m. California time is perfect for everyone in Europe. So. Uh, yes, please email me offline. Yeah. Uh, that was sort of, what are we going to do about joining the ODFTC? So. Any other questions, or shall we get some coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, coffee break it is. Thank you very much. <laughs>